That thing's going 11 inches a minute. So much faster. So much faster. What's funny, I'd never even heard of a Fronius before. Miller and Lincoln are like here making welders. These guys are up here going and looking at the quality and the CMT, PMC, and, and the process that they come up with. It's like, wow, there's some serious technology in this. And then seeing that the, that the industrial world around us, not just specifically, like if you just zoom in on race cars, fine, it's all TIG welding. But if you zoom out two layers, TIG welding's not nearly as prominent as a MIG process or consumable wire process. There's a lot more applications out there that are using that. So I thought to myself, wow, maybe there is some room here. Then, you know, seeing the, the end result and the quality, I now have parts that I hold in my hand and I feel like the quality is higher than it was when it was hand TIG welded. I sacrificed no quality, I gained speed and efficiency, and I got a value add on my components and I can deliver a quicker, faster, more effective, product to my customer. I love TIG welding. I think it's a beautiful process. I think there's also like, if you're a guy that TIGs welds and you get behind the hood and you're just dabbing rod, I specifically love welding aluminum. There's just something about the weld pool, how it flows and looks, I just love it, right? So race car, TIG welding, they're synonymous. Um, but it's it lacks in speed, right? You just can't, you can only TIG weld so fast. A race car chassis is still gonna be TIG welded just as what it is, but suspension components, well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of MIG welded processes out there. So I, I first found THG Automation on YouTube. What I loved about it specifically is I'm like, that dude is in a shop just like mine, playing with a robot. I'm like, this is great, I love this. When Jimmy told me that the power source, the Fronius power source was like 30,000 bucks, I about laughed at him, right? I'm just like, there's no such thing as a MIG welder that costs 30 grand. And I start looking at it and I'm like, nah, uh I thought it was a joke, right? And then he tells me what's the, the slogan is, you drive a drive a Lincoln, drink a Miller, and weld with a Fronius. I was like, okay, that's, that's pretty good. And, <laughs> and so then I started looking at what the stuff that they do, and it's like, oh, never mind. They're, not, they're on, Miller and Lincoln are like here making welders, these guys are up here. And I say that as a guy, like if you walk around, I got a lot of blue machines, except for that lonely green one over there. I'm taking a little bit of a gamble in my view going, I felt like I was taking more of a gamble before um, going the MIG route on the robot. Like it, it was one of those things that I was never gonna buy one of those ESOB things or one of those Miller things. I'm just like, that's not that bitching. That's just not. Maybe it's cool cause it'll duplicate, but it's just like, yep. Joe Dickhead with a MIG welder did it. It's just not, it just, it doesn't rise to that level, right? So it needed to be something like the Fronius. It was, it needed to be something that was extra special and really brought the quality in. And so I felt like I was taking a little bit of a gamble because I didn't know how it was going to be received. Like I shipped some components to somebody the other day and I was like, hey man, you just made the cut. Like everything switched to powder coat. And it was like, really? He was like, there were less money too. And I'm like, yep. I'm like, this is the first batch that's been welded with the robot. And I sent him pictures and he's like, these things are, he's like, the average guy almost doesn't know. They're not even savvy enough to really, it's not that they're dumb, they're just not like, they're, don't, they're not immersed in the world of it, right? And so they don't even think twice. They pull it out of the box and it's perfect stacked dimes across the part and they're going, you're gonna complain about this? Like, I don't know that we can make it, You can you make that better, right? Like, yeah. is, it, is it possible for it to be better? Like you could say that it was hand TIG welded, but that doesn't make it a better component. The fact that they use this process to make rocket parts was evidence to me. It's, even though it's welded by a robot, it's programmed by us, it's monitored, checked, it's press broke by us, we program the plasma, we program the mill, it's like, there's a lot of passion and there's a lot of intimacy in the part, right? Like, that, I know those parts inside and out. I, because I've drawn every line, I put every dot in, I put in every hole, like everything about it, I know. That piece of it, that's like two hours on the bench for a guy and it's uh, eight minutes with the Cobot. And not only that, it's nicer. Like it's just nicer. I, there's no way you can argue when, when you look at the part, the consistency is there, the heat affected zone is, is perfect. It doesn't warp the faceplate as much as it used to. Like it, it wasn't, it's not even that it was bad. It was just, you could tell a little bit like, eh, it's not as flat as it used to be. You know, and like it would kind of flare on the edges because it's just so much time, right? That torch, you're at 225 amps and you're going three inches a minute, right? That's a lot of heat saturation in the part. That thing's going 11 inches a minute, right? It's so much faster, so much faster.